Hello, wildlings. I'm your creep smith, and you found my fear forge. <laughs> Lucky you. Welcome back, wildlings. This evening's entry is a devilish duo of scary stories sourced in your subconscious. Bad dream and nightmares. Bad dream. Daddy, I had a bad dream. You blink your eyes and pull up on your elbows. Your clock glows red in the darkness. It's 3.32 a.m. Do you want to climb into bed and tell me about it, kiddo? No, Daddy. Well, the oddness of the situation wakes you up more fully. You can barely make out your daughter's pale form in the darkness of your room. Why not, sweetie? Because in my dream, when I told you about the dream, the thing where mommy's skin sat up. For a moment, you feel paralyzed. You can't take your eyes off your daughter. And the covers behind you begin to shift. Nightmares by Annabelle I used to think nightmares were fun, so I asked for more. They were the only source of excitement in my endless rut of a life. I never used to get nightmares, and for that, I really should have been grateful. But I wasn't. I wished for more. I craved the adrenaline and the pounding of my heart as my eyes flew open in the night. They say... Be careful what you wish for. They're not lying. The nightmares started to come quicker, and much more often. It was small things at first, the things that anybody could have. Being chased by wild dogs, being abandoned, running naked into school. I tired of them quickly, and I had no reason to keep myself awake after that. Soon they began to become more intense. My brain began playing with me. I'd be held down by my throat, unable to breathe, unable to scream, my chest heaving but no air entering my lungs. I'd be torn at, my skin coming away like butter. I'd be tied down as those I trusted sliced into me. I began to dream of hell. Then I'd awake, my eyes not quite focusing on anything in my small box of a room. The purples of my cushions would merge with the cream of my wall, and the giant teddy bear that sat in the corner would become a blur. But I could breathe. There was no pressure on my throat. I would take deep lungfuls of air as if I hadn't breathed for hours. I would scratch at my skin as if to check that it was still there, and it was. <laughs> I would check my clock, and it would always be the same time. Five minutes past three in the morning. And that became my waking hour. My eyes would try to slide closed, but I couldn't let that happen. Instead, I would pull myself to the bathroom, down the carpeted hall, and splash icy water on my face until I was no longer in danger of sleeping. That sleep deprivation, I concluded, would be better than facing the horrors of the night. I'd go into school like a zombie and nobody would seem to notice that anything was different. I began to become paranoid. As people walked past me, the memories would come rushing back, invading my mind. She was the one who made the first incision two nights ago. He was the one who had his hand over my neck last week. They were the ones that retrieved the knives in the depths of hell. I pushed everyone away in fear that they would build hell on earth. So I sat alone, excluding myself from the drone of conversation and the inconvenience of life. My nightmares would plague me. Creative writing assessments in English were easy, just 
pick a knight and there would be a horror story right there. Talks of battles in history shocked others, but barely even struck me as odd. The drawings that I did in art made everyone feel nauseous, but seemed quite normal to me. And lessons on hell and religious education would strike fear into my very soul. Of all the things I needed, more imagery about Hades was not one of them. Those lessons began to creep into my dreams, too. Now, a human being can go 14 days without sleep before they die. The record for days without sleep is 11, a record which is held by a university student from America. My personal record is five days. I started hallucinating so horrifically on day five, I couldn't take it anymore. The susurrus whispers began first. Those voices assured me that I was crazy that I was worthless and doomed to be ended by my own mind. Next it was the high-pitched, sempiternal squealing. It sounded like nails running down a chalkboard or a knife scraping against a plate only twice as high and five times as loud. Then inanimate objects began to turn eloquent. The spots of brightness emitting from plants and pictures blinded me. I knew that these images were merely chemical, but can a schizophrenic stop having hallucinations? Neither can someone suffering with extreme sleep deprivation. Then I decided to suck it up and face the monsters every night. I've been sleeping pretty well. When I say well, I mean that I've been getting six hours of sleep a night. That's why I know that I'm not hallucinating when I see dark figures in my bedroom at night, when I hear the, the creaking of my door opening, I know it's real. When the piercing screams of tortured souls invade my eardrums, I know it's actually happening. When I hear the hissed threats that they're coming for me, sadly, I know those are real too. They say, be careful of what you wish for. I wished for nightmares. I wished for hell. I got it. Now it's five minutes past three in the morning. I can hear them. So stay scary, my wildlings. Pay attention to your dreams. But don't be so cocky as to wish they were a scary escape from life. That's what you have me for. And make the most of your nights.